Hey guys, John Conley, UncleJohnSoap.com. So yesterday you guys saw a video where we showed you how we cut our soaps with our new soap cutter. Uh, day before we did a video about making our funky one-off batch of simple soap, no scent, no color, just very basic bath soap. You know, this is where you should start, basic. We had a drawing last night and I'll announce the winners here in just a couple minutes. But first, I wanted to show you how we cut our round shave soap pucks. And I want to give you a little bit of a walk through how we set up our mold for those and everything else. We'll do another video at some point. I'll put a couple links in here where we've made shave soap before and that I've talked about the, um, the shave soaps and things like that and the molds. Okay, so when we make our shave soap pucks, we use a poly tubing. See how that's flat? It's sealed on both sides. And it's on a continuous roll. I mean, you can get like a, I think it's a 1500 foot roll from Uline. I'll put a link to that down in the description too. And uh, what we do is we separate it, get it all separated because it's kind of stuck together from being flat. So it's all workable now. Nothing's stuck together. And then I'm going to have Megan show you how we put the jars in because, well, I think I can do it. I'm a big boy. So I usually will stretch this just a touch. You don't want to do too much because you'll rip it at the seams if you do. This is very um, vinyl feeling almost. It's it's not the brittle kind of plastic like you would heat shrink. So don't don't go for that. And I'll, and I like I said, I'll put the uh, link to the exact product down in the description. So this is just a plastic two ounce jar, little tub. We get these from Wholesale Supplies Plus for our, some shave pucks get poured right into these jars. Some are just cut and put in boxes. We use this in the bottom of this to make a flat spot. We used to just tie a knot in the end. Um, and we found that we were wasting a lot of soap because there'd be that rounded part that you really can't do anything with. So we make it flat so that we can just cut it off straight. And I'll show you that in a second too. So we slide it into the bag. See if I can do this right. It can be a little bit of a pain. And these are wider. I mean, slightly narrower would probably be narrower would probably be better, but that's what I've got. And the goal is just to get it as 90 degree with the, the mold liner as much as possible. That's pretty darn close right there. Eh, that side's a little wonky. And then what we'll do is we will tape this part. I'm just kind of folding it in on itself. We don't want any leaks on this. I mean, the, the tension of the jar will help stop leaks, but just in case. I just use clear packing tape. And make sure that it's taped up like that and then I wrap some rubber bands around it nice and tight just it's like wearing a belt and suspenders just got to make sure everything stays where it should and then that will hang and the soap will pour in and You'll get less waste out of it that way. And then let me show you what we do with the next part. This is our jig. It's funky, but it works. It's just a soup can, vegetable can. One of the old styles where you can cut out the top and bottom. PVC pipe would work for this too, but it's a little more difficult because you got to get the inside dimensions the same as that plastic uh, sleeve that I showed you. So Meg's going to go ahead and stick this plastic up inside the can and show you how we attach it. She's stretching in a little bit over the top of the can. Now you can see how it hangs down like that. Some rubber bands around it.
Yes. Then we do some back like that, which helps hold the can, keep the weight from like bending the can. There's only one screw holding that can onto the end of that two by four. And uh, so it helps keep the, the soap from bending the can that way. And that is that. Pour the soap in there, the plastic straightens itself out. And then we can take the sleeve out of the mold, tie a knot in the top, and hang it from a hook if we need to make multiple batches. All right, guys. So I've goofed up. I already cut this off before I started the camera. Um, basically, this is just what we showed you. The jar in the plastic. We take the knife and basically just run the knife right down alongside the top of the jar. Then we'll clean that off in a little bit. Now you're left with this cool little log tube of soap and here's what i did once i've cut the puck off the end i will take a utility knife and i'm just gonna split the plastic a little bit i'm beyond the soap right now and then what i want to do is take just the point and run right i don't know if i cut all the way through just a point right down that plastic so it's split. Then I'll put the split down on the bottom. Then I just use a good old classic school ruler. And I was using the plastic one because it's washable. Problem is the soap still etches the, um, etches the plastic, but it's all right. So we cut our pucks and I'm just using a regular old cheap kitchen knife. I think I got this at Walmart, honestly, guys, years ago. And I, I keep a sharp edge on it and it works perfect. So we cut our pucks. We want them to be just over two ounces. So we cut them at three quarters of an inch. I line it up with three quarters. Yeah, need to dress this edge up. And there's a puck. Normally, doesn't take that much to get the blade edge through. Line it up. And it's cutting right through the plastic and everything. Now you can put this in the box the way it is. As these cure though, the plastic will wrinkle up and come loose. So a lot of times what we'll do is one person will cut and the other person will get ready to put it in boxes because it can cure in the box. They'll grab the edge of that plastic with the knife, peel it off, stack them in a little pyramid, let them air dry for a little while, then box them. And sometimes while you're cutting, the plastic just kind of peels itself, <laughs> which is fine. Not hurting a thing. I would, if we decided to make these a little thicker, like seven eighths, I could use my multi-bar cutter, but then they'd be seven eighths and they'd be heavier. That's a whole different uh, price structure and everything because it's more weight, less pucks per batch. And I'm just not sure that it wouldn't smush because this is a dual lye recipe for shave soaps. Um, it's going to stay a little softer than normal bath soap anyway. So. And that's it. And you can see where some of the plastics already started to curl, which just makes it easier for the person taking the plastic off and putting it in boxes. We had one ugly bar there, which is all right. Somebody will use that. Yep. And the coloring is because of the vanilla content. So another couple days, they'll all be uniform color. They'll be that, that uh, brownish color all throughout. Sort of like that. So that's it. It's that simple. Sometimes you just do things by hand because it's easier. Um, not everything, you know, this is handmade. We make handmade products, guys. We don't need a machine for every single little thing. Just like I showed you with making soap with a whisk the other day. Um, you know, cutting soap by hand with a knife can be kind of cathartic sometimes. I wouldn't want to do it every day, but when we make a bunch of batches of shave soap, you know, the pucks, sometimes it's just the way we have to do it. 
All right, so on to our winners. We uh, made that simple soap batch the other day. Had you guys email me at unclejohnsoap at gmail.com, and in the subject line you had simple soap giveaway. And last night we did a random drawing for four winners. We used random.org. I'm not going to, I don't film all that. And the names I came up with, and we did it in, in order of how they came in. Uh, Leticia, Jody, Lisa, and I don't think this is a name. I think it's a business name, part of their email, Dreama. Um, you guys are our four winners. Congrats. You each got six bars of soap headed your way. Um, and just remember, if you haven't emailed me back after I told you you've won, I I'll give you a day or so. Um, but then if you don't respond, I'm going to have to move on and I'll do another random drawing and pick the next person in line. I don't want to upset anybody, but I can't. I got to clear the counters. I'm already, a, you know, cluttery person and I don't need to make it worse. So I appreciate you guys being, you know, part of the videos and attentive. Just help me to get my stuff out of here when I do these. That's it, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you have any questions, comments, leave me comments down below. And uh, do me a favor. Click subscribe and click the little bell icon so you don't miss anything. Actually, I'll do the thing right here. See ya.